Sports. Lexington City leaders have announced additional resources for people who may be facing eviction. In tonight's top story at 6, ABC 36's Anna Medina joins us live from downtown Lexington with more on what help is available. Anna? Well, the message today centered around the expansion of the housing stabilization program, a program that's been in effect since 2021, right after the pandemic. And city leaders say the additional services will let tenants access legal counsel as well as mediation with landlords. We never want anyone in our community to face eviction. As rent climbs and evictions continue, Lexingtonians are in need of help. Tuesday, city leaders gathered to offer up a solution. Lexington's housing stabilization program has been very successful in providing assistance to those at the biggest risk of losing their housing during the pandemic. From the program's start in February of 2021, it has provided $46.5 million of assistance to over 6,300 Lexington households and 1,100 landlords. We will continue to provide assistance while expanding services to include mediation with landlords and access to legal counsel for tenants facing eviction. In partnership with Legal Aid of the Bluegrass and Kentucky Equal Justice Center, both will help operate the new services. The organizations are also receiving close to $2 million in one-time federal funds to continue the program. And we'll do that in three ways with our partnership through the mediation project that the mayor announced and also through an expansion and continuation of our rental assistance for tenants and landlords and then also for um, direct assistance and representation in eviction cases. We will devote our housing outreach to connecting people not just with lawyers but with information and resources they can use to empower themselves to achieve housing stability. Mayor Linda Gorton adding that the additional help with legal counsel will help many that could be facing an eviction. Legal representation is a powerful tool in preventing evictions and helping people relocate to more sustainable housing without the strain of an eviction on their record. The announcement today ties in with the Affordable Housing Fund. Now, Commissioner Charlie Linter adds that the city has been able to stood up one of the largest social services program in the city's history, helping many pay back over $45 million in rent. In Lexington, Anna Medina, ABC 36 on your side. All right, let's get another check on that forecast. TG back with us. Uh, we woke up to some sunshine today, but that, that quickly nice. went away. Yeah. Uh, very windy, very <laughs> cloudy, and still chilly out there, TG. Yeah, yeah that was expected. Uh, that was kind of bonus sunshine this morning, but with that upper low to the north, the sun comes out, warms the surface a little bit. You get that air rising, and then boom, you got cloud cover this right. afternoon. Now, it was exactly the opposite. We had clouds down south, then it cleared out. So it was kind of all about location, but I think across the board, we managed to sneak uh, to at least 60 in most locations. Here's what we got now, mainly cloudy skies, had some sun, and I think still do in our far southern counties. You see the bulk of the organized rain has now shifted farther east into eastern Ohio. Ohio, Western Pennsylvania and Northern West Virginia. And that's an indication that thing is finally beginning uh, to get some legs and head out of the area. We've got the low to mid-level overcast. Our bluegrass pace here is Skyview HD camera network kicks and fronts and cam. It has been a breezy to windy afternoon. We've had gusts over 30 miles per hour. Sustained winds 20 to 25. They'll back down a little bit, but it is going to remain breezy during the overnight. That'll keep the air mixed up and keep any frost potential out of the area. If in fact we do fall into the 30s, you notice the mid to upper 50s milder out to our west. Of course, chilly closer to that low. Next 36 hours Hours. A passing shower can't be ruled out as the clouds stick around. We'll start out in the low 40s in most locations, and then tomorrow we'll do exactly the opposite. 
will start out mainly cloudy and then we will clear from southwest to northeast. A northwest wind at about 10 to 15. That'll level us off, I think, 60 ish for an afternoon high. And it could be kind of chilly. Maybe some scattered frost in the outlying areas on Thursday morning, but a nice warm up on the way. Of course, everyone worried about what Oaks and Derby Day will bring. And it looks like Friday, definitely uh, some rain on tap even over uh, in Louisville. I'll tell you more about that in your seven day forecast coming up. Now to an update on a Louisville Metro police officer shot in the head at Old National Bank three weeks ago. Louisville Metro police say officer Nicholas Wilt is showing some signs of improvement in his lung condition after spending a week at Jewish a uh, week and a half rather at Jewish Hospital. Uh, police say he's been off of ECMO for over 48 hours and today was transferred back to U of L Hospital for monitoring by the trauma team in the ICU. Although he's doing better, he's still working on responding to commands. His battle with pneumonia has become more manageable. Over the past 24 hours, police say his oxygen saturation levels have consistently stayed within normal ranges without the assistance of ECMO or a ventilator. He is still listed as critical but stable at this point. Well, two police officers are in the hospital after a training incident this afternoon in Lexington. Police say they got a call around 1230 about two officers injured in a training exercise at the mounted unit stables in Coolivan Park. Both officers were taken to the hospital with what was described as non life threatening injuries. It's still unclear how those injuries happened. We'll of course keep you updated. Well, four Kentucky firefighters will be remembered at this weekend's National Fallen Firefighters Memorial in Maryland. The National Fallen Firefighters Foundation says the role of honor includes 144 fighter, uh, firefighters, 79 who died in the line of duty last year. The 42nd National Tribute features each firefighter's name inscribed on a bronze plaque, which will become a permanent part of the National Memorial in honor of their sacrifices. The honorees include 63-year-old Fire Chief Jerry Steve Farrell from the Monticello Fire Fire Department who died due to complications from cancer, as well as 46 year old Battalion Chief Jonathan Johnny Jacobs from Georgetown Fire and Rescue who died due to complications from a disease associated with long term exposure to smoke and chemicals. Both deaths were deemed it by the state to be in the line of duty. Two other fallen Louisville firefighters are also included. Saturday, the National Fallen Firefighters Candlelight Service will begin at 7.30 p.m. That memorial will be live streamed online at firehero.org. Then on Sunday, the memorial service begins at 10 a.m. There are other ways you can pay tribute to this year's honored firefighters. For more information, click on this web story at WTVQ.com. The Prestonsburg Police Department has a new canine on the job. Meet Secret. Secret's a dual purpose police canine donated by the Iron Canine. Last June, Prestonsburg Police and the Floyd County Sheriff's Office lost three of their officers and canine Drago during an ambush attack. The Iron Canine says Secret, the Dutch Shepherd, completed six months of training and is now with newly minted canine handler Officer Arms. This July, Officer Arms and Secret will travel to Washington, D.C. to attend a memorial in honor of their fallen brother and fallen canine Drago. Some election news. Don't forget the deadline to request an absentee ballot for the upcoming May 16th primary is tonight. Now, the Secretary of State's office says you must apply online at govoteky.gov by midnight. The deadline to register to vote is already passed. Two days of early in-person voting will run from Thursday, May 11th to Saturday, May 13th. Polls are open on Election Day from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. Tuesday, May 16th. Well, it's Derby Week and at Churchill Downs today, it's 5-0 Tuesday. It's quickly become the popular Locals Day. Organizers say Tuesday's all about celebrating what makes Kentucky Derby Week so special. That's the community. Today's festivities included Louisville's tradition makers, inspiration providers, and, of course, diehard Derby fans. It was $5 <laughs> admission all day today. Now, tomorrow is Champions Day, and this year commemorates the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's Triple Crown win. Thursday's the wildly popular Thurby, which features horse racing, bourbon, and music. And Friday is Oaks Day as people put on their festive pink attire for America's premier and most lucrative horse race for three-year-old fillies. That leads up to Saturday's Derby, of course. You can find more information all on our website. That's WTVQ.com. <laughs>
State leaders are encouraging Kentucky artists to submit their work to be featured in the Team Kentucky Gallery at the State Capitol in Frankfurt. And we'll tell you how your work can be featured. And the Jonas Brothers are heading to Lexington this September. More on how you can get your hands on those coveted tickets coming up. More breezy conditions and cloudy conditions this afternoon thanks to that upper low sitting across the Great Lakes. But we are finally going to get some improvement as we head into the late week. Of course, we'll have that Oaks and Derby Day forecast for you coming up after the break. Make your first move with battery power made by steel. Right now, save $50 on the FSA 57 battery trimmer. Real steel. Find yours. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. At Rally's, I'm in the driver's seat. Give me that $5 meal deal with a Rally burger or a mushroom Swiss burger with fries, chicken bites, and a drink for just five bucks. Whatever you order, own it at Rally's. Get all that flavor delivered. The pain level was over 10, and my doctor recommended that I go to Good Feet and try the arch supports there. It was the first time that I had no pain. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. A desperate Kelly Kraft falsely attacks Daniel Cameron. But you know what's really strange? Kraft worked for President Trump, and Trump endorsed Daniel, not Kraft. Maybe because while working for taxpayers, Kelly Kraft was absent from her post half the time. And then Kraft got caught misleading Kentuckians in her opioid ad. Daniel Cameron sued Joe Biden to secure the border and stop illegal drugs. Daniel Cameron, the only candidate endorsed by President Trump. I grew up on my family farm in rural Kentucky, where we have lived and farmed for more than 200 years. My beliefs are rooted in a strong faith and they never wavered. Ryan Quarles is a champion for life, which is why he's endorsed by the Kentucky Right to Life, has an A rating from the NRA, and will always back the blue. If you're ready for a governor that thinks like you because they were raised like you, I'd be honored to have your vote. Ryan Quarles for governor. TV's back with that Derby Week forecast because everyone needs to know how to dress like literally all week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are finally kind of rounding the corner and things uh, will be a little better tomorrow, much better on Thursday. Still looking at some rain chances, unfortunately, on Oaks Day, but okay. uh, it may be one of those 50-50 deals uh, as far as uh, the big races are concerned. First things first, we got to get rid of this upper low, which uh, is <laughs> yeah, slowly really, but surely yeah. going to happen. And as expected, we start out with some sunshine, but that sun, of course, mixing the air up, getting that air to rise, and we had some clouds, another little spoke of energy coming around the bend, that low over the eastern Great Lakes beginning to make some progress eastward. Uh, but you see off to our north, starting to see a few rain showers develop. Our data kind of indicating that's going to rotate through. So the clouds we have out there right now should be sticking around this evening and overnight. So a few passing showers shouldn't be any big deal. And then we'll begin to see the improvement with sunshine returning and milder temperatures slowly but surely the next couple of days. Bluegrass Pace Care Sky VHC Camera Network out of the Kentucky Horse Park. Still breezy. We've had gusts 30 to 35 throughout the afternoon with sustained winds 20 to 25. We're at 57. Uh, here in Lexington, 55, Danville, and in Richmond, down south, it was kind of the opposite. We started out with a little cloudiness, a little wave moving down south, and then it cleared out, and temperatures spiked up low 60s a couple of hours ago. I mentioned the early sunshine, and look what it did for afternoon highs, overachieving into the low 60s. 63 the official high, 45 the morning low. There's your average high and low now, 72 and 51, and it may be... Uh, getting close to Derby Day, if not on 
Derby Day before we get back to that. So the low exiting, but there's that last little spoke. It'll be far enough to the east tomorrow to where we'll get high pressure building in, and that's going to help us uh, with the improvement. So look here on our future cast. Heading through the evening and the overnight, you see a, a bit of green here and there. That's that last little wave moving on through. I think the clouds will stay thick enough to keep us out of the 30s. That, in the fact, winds are going to be 10 to 15. So not worried about any scattered frost tonight. That may be tomorrow night as we clear out. Speaking of, look at tomorrow afternoon. We're going to see temperatures into the low 60s. Sunshine but winds will be out of the northwest, so that'll kind of level the playing field and not allow us to get any milder than that. That's going to change, obviously, into Thursday. You see the yellow and the orange on the temperature contour map beginning to work back into the area toward Oaks and Derby Day, even with the rain chances. Thursday and for Thurby, which, of course, getting more popular each year, on Thursday up at Churchill Downs, ideal, probably 70 in Louisville, 68 here in Lexington. Here's the issue on Oaks Day and for part of Derby Day. This low here is going to dive to the southeast. We'll have moisture riding up and over the front. So late on Derby afternoon, the rain will be spreading into eastern, central and eastern Kentucky. But look at Louisville late Friday afternoon. If this verifies, it would be wet over at Churchill Downs. Waking up on Saturday morning to some rain, especially areas south of 64. But as we get deeper in the afternoon, Toward post time for the run for the roses, we're dry. So if that scenario plays out, we're going to be in pretty good shape for Derby Day overall. Your seven-day forecast here, still breezy tomorrow. Should sneak into the low 60s as we clear things out into the afternoon. Nice looking Thursday and then dodging a few rain showers Friday and into Saturday. The chances get less the deeper we go in the day. And then that's more like it Sunday and beyond as far as afternoon highs. Yeah, maybe a pop-up thunderstorm with a warm to the afternoon, but uh, highs early next week, upper 70s and sneaking back into the low 80s. Well, coming up, you might want to see your art in the Kentucky State Capitol. Well, state leaders are encouraging Kentucky artists to submit their work to the Team Kentucky Gallery, and we'll tell you how you can do that. Plus, get ready for the Jonas Brothers. They are headed back to Lexington this fall. We'll tell you how you can get your hands on those tickets. My name is Justin Peterson. If you or a loved one have suffered a serious personal injury, my promise to you is that I will meet with you to discuss your case. I will personally handle your case and work hard as possible to ensure accountability. Other attorneys you see on TV will not give you those promises because they can't make that happen. In order to make sure the at-fault party is accountable for your harms and losses, your attorney must understand how your injury has impacted your life, which means getting to know you. Kentucky, call me. What does Kentucky need in an Ag Commissioner? Someone who's tough as Shell. Jonathan Shell, a farmer, fighter, and family man with the experience to lead. There's no quit in Jonathan Shell. He'll never back down from the woke liberals attacking our way of life. To stop Biden and save Kentucky, Frankfurt needs fighters who are tough as Shell. I'd be honored to have your vote. There's a clear choice in the race for governor. My opponents, career politicians, who'd rather follow than lead. Kentucky has big challenges to tackle, and it's going to take a leader to solve them. I've spent my career doing just that. A proven leader who negotiated trade deals that created Kentucky jobs. A conservative that stood up to the Chinese Communist Party and an outsider not owned by the establishment. Kentucky needs proven leadership, not more politicians. ABC 36, on your side. Next ET. Yes, SJ, me for the win. We're at fashion's biggest night. It's the Met Gala. ET's in the middle of all the Met mania. Next ET. Tonight at 7 on ABC 36. You're invited to come be our guest this Sunday at Southland. For service times and campus locations, head over to our website at southland.church. You're watching ABC 36 News at 6 with Erica Bivens, Paxton Boyd, Chief Meteorologist T.G. Shock, and Sports with Jeff Pecoro. ABC 36 on your side. 
Well, if you're an artist, you can submit your work to be featured in the Team Kentucky Gallery at the State Capitol in Frankfurt. Now, selected artworks will be displayed for a six-month rotation in the Capitol and the Team Kentucky Digital Art Gallery, where artists can provide additional information. Now, after each uh, rotation, the artwork will be returned to the artist. The next rotation is scheduled to begin July 1st. The deadline to submit artwork for consideration is the fall of 2023 exhibit. It's Friday, June 2nd. Artwork will be selected by the second week of June and artists will be notified shortly thereafter. Now you can submit photos of artwork using the application right here on the gallery's website. Governor Bashir says Kentucky's arts and humanities industry generates more than $5.6 billion in economic impact. On some exciting entertainment news, the Jonas Brothers, you've probably heard, they're returning to Lexington this September. Uh, the American pop rock band announcing today a massive 35-date stadium tour where they say they'll perform five albums a night, and that includes a stop at Rupp Arena on Tuesday, September 22nd, uh, 6th, rather. Uh, tickets for the show will be in high demand, so verified pre-sale will be your best shot at getting tickets. I think TG's already got his. Uh, you can register now through Saturday. Fans selected will receive an access code to participate in the pre-sale starting Tuesday, May 9th. You know, he might be getting them for his daughters. <laughs> we'll see. Not himself. Next in sports, we'll continue our coverage previewing the 149th Kentucky Derby. And a former Wildcat gave maximum effort in his team's playoff win. More on Tyrese Maxey's big game in next in sports. Welcome to the Spectrum Lab, where we're bringing you the best in connectivity with Spectrum One. Get Spectrum One with Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month, plus advanced Wi-Fi, plus your first line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited, free for 12 months. Call 833-823-4999. Spectrum Internet delivers the fastest internet speeds in the nation, so you always have the speed you need for all your connected devices. This guy gets it. Advanced Wi-Fi comes with state-of-the-art security and privacy, which automatically blocks online threats on all your devices. If it's connected, it's protected. Plus, Spectrum Mobile gives you unlimited talk, text, and data on a reliable nationwide network. At Spectrum, we're always working to bring you better ways to connect. You think they noticed the orb? I think so. Get Spectrum One with Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month, plus advanced Wi-Fi, plus your first line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited, free for 12 months. Call 833-823-4999. Visit Spectrum.com or Spectrum Store today. I'm Appliance Pro. We'll help you make your kitchen chef ready. Appliance Pro's inventory blowout sale continues now through the end of the month. This is the perfect time to update your home's kitchen. Come in now for the best selection on top quality GE refrigerators, washers and dryers, ovens, ranges, dishwashers and more. We are locally owned and operated and located at 2320 Fortune Drive in Lexington. The inventory blowout sale till the end of the month. Don't miss it. We're under attack from a radical movement. They want to tax cow farts and ban meat. I'm Richard Heath, a conservative for Ag Commissioner. I'll stop the lunacy and protect our way of life. Richard Heath, Agriculture Commissioner. Veteran, prosecutor, Trump Republican, conservative Mark Metcalf. He's running for treasurer to restore fiscal sanity and end Biden's recklessness. Mark Metcalf will stop illegals from siphoning tax dollars and return money to taxpayers. Mark Metcalf for treasurer. Explore, compare, and find your car at mancars.com. Man, what a deal. Derby week continues as we get closer and closer to the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. Forte is the favorite to win, but as we saw last year, anything can happen. Now, last year's Derby recorded the fastest splits ever in Derby history with the early leader. Summer is tomorrow running the first quarter mile and check this 21.78 seconds. The fast pace opened an opportunity for anyone to win and then rich strike happened. This year, trainer Brad Cox has four horses in the race, including Angel of Empire sitting in post 14 right next to Forte. And Cox explains that he wouldn't be surprised if there's another burner of a race this year. I'm happy with it. Um, you know, break Flavian will put him in a great spot. He always does. And excited about giving him an opportunity Saturday. He's a good horse. On paper, it doesn't, doesn't look like it's going to be real fast, but I know that the horses get revved up. It's a big crowd. It's a loud crowd. The jocks get revved up, and they seem to go fast early, and I don't think you're going to see much difference. 
On Monday night, former Kentucky Wildcat guard Tyrese Maxey showed why Wildcat fans loved him here in Lex. The Philadelphia 76ers star guard scored 26 points in the Sixers game, one win over the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Of course, his performance is of no surprise to us here in Kentucky, but the young rising star did put the rest of the world on notice of what he's capable of doing on the big stage. Unfortunately, you left. You're like, dude, you can go left. You work on it every single day. Shoot the shots they're giving you. But uh, I got great looks. I got great looks. Um, Tuck set really good screens. Uh, Piri set really good screens. I was able to get downhill. Mel got on me at halftime about going downhill. Uh, he felt like I was stopping and, and not being aggressive. And uh, that's what I did, man. Um, you know, that's why I, I really appreciate my teammates because they have uh, really pushed me this season to be the best possible I, I could possibly be for this team. And it's worked out for us. Later on tonight, some more former Wildcat players are in the NBA playoffs. Emmanuel Quickly and the New York Knicks look to bounce back after losing game one to Bam Adebayo in the Miami Heat. They'll play at 7.30 tonight. Julius Randle, he's questionable to play. He injured his ankle earlier in the playoffs. And at 10 o'clock, the Los Angeles Lakers take on the Golden State Warriors. In game one of their series, the Lakers, they are loaded with former Wildcats. You have Anthony Davis, Jared Vanderbilt, and winning Gabriel on the team. So we'll see if Kentucky West can get the win. That'll wrap things up for sports. I'm Chris Bolton. ABC 36 Solid Blue Sports Report is brought to you by UK Federal Credit Union. Big trucks can cause big wrecks. I'm Darrell Isaacs, and I am Kentucky's big truck lawyer. Get the strength of Isaacs and Isaacs, because big truck cases demand serious experience. Big truck lawyers who know how to win. So if you've been injured by a big truck, let me... Do the heavy lifting. Call the hammer. You know what they say, mornings and DQ breakfast go together like biscuits and gravy. Oh, that's right. Two fluffy, freshly baked buttermilk biscuits smothered in warm signature black pepper gravy that's filled with mouth-watering Purnell sausage in every tasty bite. Because you know what they say, a quality morning starts with a quality breakfast. <laughs> They do say all this stuff, right? Well, they will, once they get a taste of our hearty and delicious DQ biscuits and gravy. And it's only a DQ. Happy tastes good. They tried to intimidate me and my family. I stood strong then, and I won't back down now. That's why over 100 law enforcement leaders have endorsed my campaign and I'm President Trump's candidate too. I support tough prosecution, tough sentencing, and tough enforcement. Kentucky law enforcement knows I have their back and they have mine. I'm Daniel Cameron. We need a governor who backs the blue, and that's exactly the kind of governor I'll be. Calling all car owners. Fleet Doc is the most trusted vehicle doctor in the bluegrass. Servicing light to medium duty vehicles for both industry and the public. Let Fleet Doc help you ace your car checkup. Now through May, we're offering $50 off any brake or preventative maintenance service and 25% off three or more flush services. Recognized as a Carfax top rated service provider, Fleet Doc is your one stop shop for all your car's needs. Make an appointment with your trusted vehicle doctor today. Visit Fleet Doc, located in Lexington and Richmond. Every time with Kentucky Five, the new daily draw game where you match five numbers to win. Kentucky Five, your five numbers could be the one. There is no pecan chicken salad sandwich quite like this one. Nope, this Arby's made to order masterpiece can't be topped, except very literally by honey wheat bread. Arby's, we have the meat. Coming up tonight, President Biden to deploy hundreds of active duty U.S. troops to the southern border. The stabbing spree in a college town, multiple deaths, the writer's strike tonight, and the passenger facing charges after allegedly attacking a flight attendant on board a United flight. We're next. You're watching ABC 36 on your side. News at 6. And here's the Kentucky Lottery Scratch forecast. We're slowly but surely getting a little better, of course, on Oaks Day. Could see a few showers over in Louisville here in the booth. All right. <laughs> Short, sweet. Getting there. Thanks. Trending in the right direction. 
see you tonight at 11. <laughs> Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. The U.S. now set to deploy hundreds of active duty U.S. troops to the southern border with Mexico. The Biden administration sending 1,500 active duty troops to the border with Title 42 set to expire next week. That policy had allowed the U.S. to turn back some migrants because of concerns over COVID. Authorities now expecting a larger surge and what our team witnessed with Border Patrol. Maria Villarreal in Texas tonight. Mary Bruce live at the White House. The deadly stabbing spree in a college town in California. Multiple stabbings near UC Davis. At least two victims killed, including a student just days from graduation, what authorities are saying tonight. The major writer strike tonight affecting many of your favorite shows. The first strike in 15 years. More than 11,000 members of the Writers Guild walking off the job. Late night talk shows already canceled. The key issue tonight at the heart of this dispute. The alarming development today overseas in the UK just four days before the coronation of King Charles. Buckingham Palace placed on lockdown for a time. What was behind the scare? Here at home tonight, new reporting on the massive manhunt for a suspect wanted for allegedly killing five neighbors, including a mother and her nine-year-old son, after that family asked him to stop firing his AR-15 style weapon, what we've learned. The debt ceiling showdown tonight, the meeting now planned at the White House. And if there is no agreement, is there an 11th hour backup plan and what that would entail? Rachel Scott with the bottom line, she's on the Hill tonight. Former President Trump and the testimony at E. Jean Carroll's rape and defamation trial against the former president. What her friend testified about the phone call she says she received minutes after the alleged attack. And tonight, the former president's lawyers on whether he plans to testify. Aaron Katursky in the courtroom. A United Airlines passenger facing charges for allegedly punching a flight attendant. But the video shows tonight. The severe storms we're tracking and record May snow in some places. The system now moving into the Northeast and what it's bringing. Tonight, we remember a legendary singer providing the soundtrack for a generation. And if you watched All in the Family, Cheers, or I Dream of Jeannie, you'll want to see this tonight. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, it is great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. We do begin with the breaking news involving the U.S. border with Mexico. President Biden sending 1,500 active duty U.S. troops to the southern border as Border Patrol agents brace for the end of Title 42. That's the pandemic era rule that allowed the U.S. to turn migrants away because of concerns over COVID. Title 42 set to expire next week. They're expecting an even larger surge after that. The Pentagon tonight saying those U.S. troops could arrive as soon as next week. They will be deployed for a 90-day period. The White House tonight saying the troops will not have a law enforcement role, nor will they interact with migrants. So tonight here, what will their role be? And this evening, our team with Border Patrol officials on the border there, they are expecting this rush of migrants, and they say they welcome any help. Border towns are already stretched. El Paso declaring a state of emergency, saying 1,350 migrants arrive there every day already. And tonight, the presidents who have deployed troops to the southern border before. The White House insisting this time it is temporary again. ABC's Maria Villarreal leading us off with what she witnessed. She's in Texas tonight. Tonight, with President Biden set to send active troops to the border, this is the scene we witnessed there. Waves of migrants surging across the Rio Grande River into the U.S. We are there with Border Patrol before dawn. There's five here with two children. All of them are from Mexico. There's a, there's a good chance that this group right here will quickly get processed and will be back in Mexico by the end of the day. Border Patrol agents are now bracing for the number to soar as more migrants try to cross into the U.S. when Trump-era COVID restrictions, known as Title 42, end next week. Those restrictions allowed the U.S. to send migrants back because of COVID concerns. Chief Raul Ortiz telling us with Title 42 expiring, he needs more help on the front lines. I don't have enough agents. I don't have enough infrastructure. I don't have enough technology. I have other areas where I think our agents have really locked down the border security situation. Tonight, President Biden announcing he will send 1,500 active duty troops to the border for the next 90 days. 
but the White House making it clear they will not have a law enforcement role. These personnel will be performing administrative tasks like data entry and warehouse support. They will not be performing law enforcement functions or interacting with immigrants or migrants. In a recent U.S. deal with Mexico, the country agreed to annually accept up to 360,000 Cuban, Haitian, Nicaraguan and Venezuelan migrants who cross into the U.S. without a valid passport. But Mexico will not take them all, and the Biden administration is allowing some migrants from south of the border to apply while in their home countries for temporary legal status before getting here. And tonight, as our team has witnessed, border towns are already strained. El Paso declaring a state of emergency. 1,350 migrants are arriving every day, and that's before Title 42 expires. The U.S. will no longer turn back migrants, citing COVID concerns. Sí, muchísima gente. This young woman who came to the U.S. saying there are many more coming, trying to escape violence and economic collapse back home. David, the chief tells me he needs the most help with processing. Just this afternoon, I spoke with a number of agents. They say they welcome the help from these troops. They will be in support roles like watching cameras or helping with transportation, allowing agents to be agents right now in a critical moment. David. One more question on this tonight, Maria, our thanks to you. Let's get right to our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, also with us on this. And Mary, the White House knows uh, what's likely coming here with Title 42 expiring, an issue they have to deal with. The American people are watching closely. And give us some context here. They're not the first administration to send active duty troops to the border. David, they certainly are not. Presidents from George W. Bush to Trump to Obama have all sent troops to the border for vastly different reasons. But officials that I have talked to here stress and insist this is not some show of force, noting that these additional troops are not being sent in a law enforcement capacity. They are there simply to assist and perform those administrative tasks. This is now one of many new additional steps that the administration has announced as they brace for this, including surging asylum officers and immigration judges to the border, along with crack down on migrants who try to cross into the U.S. illegally. The bottom line here tonight, the Biden administration is trying to get ahead of this impending surge and get ahead of the political firestorm they know is likely coming, David. All right, Mary Bruce with us tonight as well. Thank you, Mary. We turn now to the alarming and deadly stabbing spree near the campus of UC Davis in Northern California. Multiple stabbings, at least two people killed, including a computer science major just days from graduating. Tonight, the FBI now joining the investigation and ABC's Will Carr in California tonight. Tonight, residents in this North California college town on edge after a series of stabbings, two of them fatal. It's shocking, especially having, you know, two murders in, you know, two or three days. Like the FBI now assisting Davis police to determine if three separate stabbings all in the past week are related. The attacks with knives were particularly brutal and violent. The latest attack occurring overnight. Police responding to a homeless encampment. We're not getting information that somebody's possibly stabbed. A woman calling 911, telling authorities she'd been stabbed multiple times through her tent. She was hospitalized in critical condition. On Saturday night, 20-year-old Kareem Abu Najam found in Sycamore Park suffering stab wounds. We have a medical doctor who found this male subject who was gasping for air. And he's bleeding on his entire body. Kareem, a computer science major at UC Davis, dying from his injuries. Kareem is gone. We were just, you know, doing his funeral arrangements rather than preparing for his graduation party. That homicide coming on the heels of the death of 50-year-old David Bro. Bro, a beloved community member who was homeless, was found stabbed multiple times Thursday morning in the city's Central Park. After Bro was found on the bench behind me, and while authorities are trying to figure out if there's a link between the stabbings, UC Davis students will study virtually tonight to stay as safe as possible. David. All right, Will Carr in Davis, California. Thank you, Will. Now to that major writer strike tonight affecting many of your favorite shows. The first strike in 15 years, in fact. More than 11,000 members of the Writers Guild walking off the job and on the picket line now. Late night talk shows among the first to shut down. Tonight here, the key issue at the heart of this dispute ABC's Matt Guppin from Los Angeles. Tonight, it's pencils down and placards up for the 11,000 plus members of the Writers Guild. Writers from LA. They have the money. We just want a little bit. To New York City. 
declaring a strike overnight over shrinking wages in a media landscape unrecognizable from the last time they waged the strike 15 years ago. The writers tell us that they're willing to go as long as necessary in order to make their voices hurt. Jimmy Kimmel! Late Night TV, the first to feel the squeeze, shows like Jimmy Kimmel Live. Unless something terrible happens, we've got a, a good week of shows. Going to reruns tonight. It's Saturday Night! Saturday Night Live might not be this weekend. The Late Show's Seth Meyers addressing the strike. What the writers are asking for is not unreasonable. Over the last decade, median weekly writer-producer pay is down 23% when adjusted for inflation. They're not seeing any of the residuals that you used to see back in the old days. With the streamers, it's an upfront payout and you're done. The union is looking for more pay up front, higher minimum pay, and more writers per show and wants to regulate the use of artificial intelligence amid fears it may threaten writers' jobs. Now, longer-term shows like Abbott Elementary, which was to start writing its third season today, might be delayed. She's probably on her way back to Abbott. I hope that we're able to rectify this, whatever that means. David, the alliance of media companies saying they're willing to reopen negotiations at any time. The writers are saying there is a yawning gap between their demands and what the alliance of media companies is willing to concede. Now, that last strike went 100 days. If this goes as long, it could significantly impact major screen productions as well. David. All right, Matt Gutman in Los Angeles. Thanks, Matt. We're following that developing headline overseas tonight, the security scare at Buckingham Palace just four days now before King Charles's coronation. A man tossing suspected shotgun shells onto palace grounds, and you can actually uh, hear authorities conducting a controlled explosion here. King, you are fighting alone, baby, you're not. Ah. Well, that suspect now in custody tonight, ABC's What's Lama Hassan, live in London. Lama, what do we know? Yeah, David, the coronation is set for Saturday, and as you can imagine, security is very tight here at the palace, with royal fans already starting to set up camp, and rehearsals are underway right now. Police say the man approached the gates here and threw what are believed to be shotgun shells onto the palace grounds. The man was arrested on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon, and authorities also detonated a bag in his possession as a precaution. Now, the palace confirms neither King Charles nor Queen Camilla were at the palace at the time and officials say there is no further threat to the public but a scary moment here for sure david all right lama hassan tonight thank you lama back here in the u.s now into the battle over raising the debt ceiling to prevent the u.s from a catastrophic default last night here treasury secretary janet yellen warning that could happen as soon as june 1st Tonight here, we're learning more about this meeting President Biden will hold at the White House. Top Democrats and top Republicans. So let's get to Rachel Scott live on the Hill tonight. Rachel, a lot of pressure here really on both sides to come to an agreement and soon, but at least publicly, uh, they appear to be very far apart here. Yes, David, there is still a major stalemate here, and so much is riding on that meeting between President Biden and those congressional leaders, specifically House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. But House Democrats have been working quietly behind the scenes on a last-ditch effort that would allow them to bypass McCarthy and raise the debt limit without agreeing to any of those federal spending cuts that he is pushing for. Now, this is a procedural move that they wouldn't be able to use until the last minute, but there is one catch here. They would need the support of at least five Republicans in the the House, and that is a long shot. If Congress does not act, the consequences would be dire. We could see stocks plunge, interest rates spike, a projected 6 million jobs would be lost, troops would go unpaid, and nearly 50 million seniors would not get Social Security checks. The U.S. has never defaulted on its debt, but right now neither side is giving an inch, David. Rachel Scott tracking it every day. Thank you, Rachel. Now to former President Trump and tonight new testimony in the sexual assault and defamation case against the former president. What a friend of columnist E. Jean Carroll testified about the phone call she says she received from Carroll minutes after that alleged attack. And tonight here, the former president's lawyers on whether Trump plans to testify himself. Here's Aaron Katursky now. Tonight, E. Jean Carroll called to the stand two women to bolster her claim former President Trump raped her in the 1990s. One of them, Jessica Leeds, claims she was also assaulted by Trump. I would like to express my support for E. Jean Carroll with her suit against Trump. Her story rings true to me. Leeds says she met Trump on a flight to New York back in 1979. He was trying to kiss me, Leeds testified. He was trying to pull me towards him. 
He was grabbing my breasts. It was like he had 40 million hands. They had been seated next to each other on the plane, and Lead said it was out of the blue. Trump has denied it ever happened, pointing to her looks. She would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. That was his response to Carol's allegations, too, denying raping her, saying, she's not my type. But in a deposition, when shown an old picture of Carol, Trump said, that's Marla, mistaking her for his ex-wife, Marla Maples. Today, Carol's friend, Lisa Bernbach, testified Carol called her five to seven minutes after the alleged assault at Bergdorf Goodman, telling the jury, E. Jean said to me many times, he pulled down my tights, he pulled down my tights. Bernbach said she whispered, E. Jean, he raped you. The defense argues Bernbach just hates Donald Trump, quoting her comments from a podcast. I cannot listen to Donald Trump speak. But Bernbach testified her only motive is to support her friend, saying, I want the world to know that she was telling the truth. Ever since this trial started, David, it had been something of a mystery whether Trump would actually show up here to testify in his own defense. Tonight, his attorney said he will not. It spares Trump, David, from what would no doubt be a rigorous cross-examination. David? Aaron Katursky in Lower Manhattan tonight. Thank you, Aaron. Next tonight, authorities pleading for the public's help in finding the suspect wanted for allegedly killing five neighbors in Cleveland, Texas. The FBI says Francisco or Opesa could be anywhere at this point. Customs and Border Protection are part of the search. Amid concerns, he may have fled to Mexico now. Police say he killed five next-door neighbors, including a mother and her nine-year-old son, after they asked him to stop firing his AR-15-style weapon for fun. They told him it was scaring their baby. We do have a note on the economy tonight in just one day now after the takeover of First Republic Bank seized by regulators and saved by J.P. Morgan Chase. Regional bank stocks taking a hit today. PacWest Bank shares fell more than 27%. Western Alliance Bank fell 15%. Banking stocks pulling the markets down, the Dow closing 367 points lower. When we come back tonight, severe storms moving east and record May snow in some places. The United Airlines passenger facing charges tonight for allegedly punching a flight attendant with the video shows. And tonight here, we remember a legendary singer. Did you know that people everywhere are recommending GoodRx? My doctor told me about GoodRx to help us save money on our meds. And my daughter told me about it. I take a lot of prescriptions. GoodRx helps me keep up. My neighbor showed me the app. It helped me save on my kids' allergy pills. Americans everywhere are sharing the savings. Uh, dropping off a prescription. Great. Another good reason to check GoodRx. Our roof got damaged during Hurricane Ida last August. We answered some questions on Angie. Next thing we knew, we were put in contact with our Angie Pro. And then that weekend, they came out and we had a brand new roof. Get started at Angie.com today. We're traveling all across America talking to people about their hearts. How's the heart? Good. You sure? I think so. How do you know? Let me show you something. Put two fingers right on those pads. Look at that. That's your heart. That is pretty awesome. With Cardio Mobile, you can take a medical grade EKG in just 30 seconds from anywhere. Cardio Mobile is proven to detect atrial fibrillation, one of the leading causes of stroke. Cardio Mobile is now available for just $79. Order at cardia.com or Amazon. Martial arts is my passion. I work out whenever I can. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it can be tough. Now I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, so you can have clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixent. Tonight here, we're tracking severe weather and record snow. More than two feet of snow falling in parts of Michigan, the snowiest May on record in Marquette. The same system bringing several days of rain and colder temperatures now to the northeast. A separate system we're tracking for Thursday, wind, hail, and possible tornadoes from Texas to Oklahoma yet again. Tonight, a passenger now facing charges for allegedly attacking United Airlines flight attendant. This was before takeoff. The plane was set to fly from San Francisco to Houston. This video appearing to show him punch the crew member apparently over his seat assignment. 
Witnesses say he then opened the emergency exit before being grabbed by other passengers. When we come back here, paying tribute to an iconic singer. Also, fans of Cheers, All in the Family, and I Dream of Jeannie, you'll want to see this. At Consumer Cellular, we offer amazing 5G coverage, backed up by incredible customer service. But that wouldn't mean much without super low prices. You already know we're up to half as much as the largest carriers. But guess what? AARP members can save even more. Yahoo! Uh-oh. Switch to Consumer Cellular now and get unlimited talk and text with a flexible data plan starting at only $20 a month. If you're 50 or over, you can be taking advantage of everything AARP has to offer right now. Join AARP for $12 for one year, and your second membership is free. Get instant access to discounts on everyday purchases, eye care and prescriptions, and tools and tips to help manage your money and maximize your health. Plus, AARP fights to protect your Social Security, Medicare, and more. Join and get an insulated trunk organizer free, plus AARP the magazine. Call or go to yesaarp.org now. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. <laughs> Excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. For COPD, ask your doctor about Breastree. Breastree gives you better breathing, symptom improvement, and helps prevent flare-ups. Breastree won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. It is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Don't take Breastree more than prescribed. Breastree may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. If you have COPD, ask your doctor about Breastree. Ready to shine from the inside out? Say yes to Nature's Bounty Advanced Gummies and Jelly Beans, the number one brand for hair, skin, and nails, with two times more biotin to bring out more of your inner beauty. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Legendary Canadian singer-songwriter Gordon Lightfoot has died. The legend lands on from the down the big lake. Best known for the wreck of Edmund Fitzgerald, Sundown, if you could read my mind. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau saying he captured the Canadian spirit. Our spirit too. Lightfoot was 84. When we come back here, if you loved all the family cheers or I Dream of Jeannie, what could soon be yours? Dupix and helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Dupixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. This Mother's Day, show mom that you worship the ground she walks on, or in this case, stands on. The new anti-fatigue comfort mat from WeatherTech is a gift she'll appreciate all year round. It makes standing comfortable in the home or office and comes in a variety of colors and finishes. And for mom's vehicle, there's cup phone, floor liner, cargo liner, and seat protector. Show mom that she deserves the best with an American-made gift from WeatherTech. Mom's gonna love this! Happy Mother's Day from WeatherTech. 
Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. Bug spray works best when your family actually wears it. Get odor-free eight-hour protection from mosquitoes and ticks without the ick. Zevo on body repellent. People love it. Bugs hate it. I struggled with CPAP every night, but now that I get the Inspire implant, it's making me think of doing other things I've been putting off. Like removing the tattoo of your first wife's name. Inspire. Learn more and view important safety information at inspiresleep.com. Hey, Mom, if I could talk, what would I tell you? I'd say thanks for giving me Cosequin all these years. Keep them moving with Cosequin, the official joint health supplement of the Westminster Dog Show. Officer down. Officer down. They were ambushed. Three men with masks. One of them is right outside. Call 911. The Rookie season finale tonight on ABC and stream on Hulu. Finally tonight here, do you recognize this living room? Those chairs, those stairs, they could soon be yours. James Comissar coming down the stairs. This is the most famous house in television history in one of the most recognizable living rooms ever boy the way glenn miller played songs that made the hit parade archie and edith all in the family of course one of the most watched sitcoms ever in america a nearly decade-long run but years later james commissar wondered where did that set go he started looking for those old sets in 1989. He even has Archie's chair. When a show went off the air, there was no system in place to save or archive anything. He didn't stop there. I Dream of Jeannie, Barbara Eden's costume from the 1960s hit, her shoes, he found them. And of course, he went to find the bar where everybody knows your name. can't look at it without thinking of that entrance. Afternoon, everybody. Hey. Oh, yeah. He said members of the cast would carve their names in the bar. Here's Kirstie Alley's name, who played Rebecca Howe. We've known each other only seconds, and I'm already tired of you. <laughs> now, many of these pieces, many of these sets, soon up for auction in Texas. And right here tonight... Hey, David. James, who loves television, on why he collected so much of this. Now parting ways with some of it. I love TV, I love the characters, and by extension, I love the memorabilia, and I am so excited to offer these pieces to uh, the next generation. Oh, the power of a little nostalgia and the laughter where everybody knows your name. It sure takes you back. We're not selling this set. We'll be sitting right back here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Good night. Tonight. E.T.'s Inside Fashion's Biggest Night. I'm coming straight to you first. With Rihanna, queen of the Met Gala, giving a baby number two update only to E.T. It's so different from the first one. Plus, more pregnancy reveals. I'm honestly surprised I could keep it a secret this long. And all the kitten couture. Oh, it's Jared Leto! I just ran into a giant cat. Dojo, you look perfect tonight! <laughs> then, from the couples... What's this lipstick over here? 
Yeah. From my lady. To the star showing up solo, what happened when exes collided? Maybe tonight, you know, I'll meet my husband. This is my birthday party, welcome. Who was the life of the party? I've spent so much money in Chanel, like I might as well be here. Why Diddy left minutes after arriving? It's a wrap already, man? How the Oscars of fashion over-delivered. Take it step by step. Girl, I have no choice. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Entertainment Tonight. I'm Kevin.